This should happen. This should oh, this happen. is great. This is a show already. Uh, um, but we do have a show. It starts when I hit this little button right here. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 107 for Thursday, the 22nd of December, 2016. This is a show with two lifelong friends talking about geek stuff, whatever else we want to talk about. And I'm just glad that Kent remembers to update this damn sheet every time because I would totally forget and blow this shit up. Guess what we have? We have we, we have co-game creator, um, all-around interesting individual, in my opinion... Feel free to share your own opinions uh, uh, via email. And Mr. Late to the Internet, John Teasdale, how are you doing today? Great, great, <laughs> really, really good. Um, I am on a staycation currently. I've, I've decided to take like 2016, I'm done with it, and taking the rest of it off. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's awesome. I'm happy to be here. This is probably one of the few uh few times uh this week i'm gonna actually be talking to more than one person at once so <laughs> um, something i personally try to avoid myself yeah right can we try to been? avoid it at all costs <laughs> uh, man <clears throat> busy as heck with all of the the new year's Eve streamathon planning and the meetings and the, the spreadsheets and all of, all of the stuff man it's been a it, it's been a long busy week uh not only that uh, all kinds of pod, podcast stuff going on. <laughs> Steph and I have been working on the Blue Box Travelers, which is the which is our Doctor Who podcast. Is is that a play on Blues Traveler? It well, see, and that's one of the things that we want somebody to do. If anybody is talented musically and you want to do a mashup for us, or uh, or just it, a, just an intro by harmonica. Yeah, th- oh, that would be perfect. Huh? If somebody do that do basically the doctor who theme song but in this, as it, blues traveler in, was in, in the style of john bopper yes oh please <laughs> i would pay money for that actually yeah. that, would, <laughs> that, that might be a commissioning yeah yeah that because yeah, that, that, that would rattle, really wrap everything right up into, into one package yes that would i would i would adore that uh, but yeah so that uh so i'll get into this in a little bit but uh lucas and i did an episode of Film Zone, mm-hmm. and uh, that was that was super exciting. I got the episode published 24 hours after after we recorded it. No, less than 24 hours. But I was gonna have it up within an hour of recording. However, with the new Mac OS, what are we on now? 10.2.2 or something like that. I think it's 10.2.2.10. Yeah, something like that, man. Time machine, right? You know how you can go into your folders and just just find your backups. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, the the new version of the OS just like fucked that all up. So I have to go into the disk utility and like kind of backdoor the folders, the shared folders, to get to all that stuff. And I had to figure out how to do all that. Uh, uh, so the files that I needed to publish the podcast were on another computer that's not even that I don't even use anymore, so I had to go into the... Anyway, See this whole thing. That, that's why you should be a digital hoarder like me. The Ritual Misery files are in like eight places. Yeah, well, they are now. <laughs> <laughs> John, are you uh, are you much of a digital hoarder yourself? Uh, I would not say so. I, I, I'd probably say that I'm the opposite. I'm a digital purger. <laughs> like every, uh, every, I don't know, year and a half, I just go back and just like, ah. I don't need all these photos. Like, what do I need to remember this crap for? <laughs> Just like delete all old memories. All the good ones are uploaded to Facebook anyway, right? Yeah, well, they'll go back through Facebook too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's it's sort of a cathartic, you know. You go back and you just like, like erase the past. Wow, that's um. I aspire to be a little more like you because I I'm kind of a hoarder myself, and I I keep too much crap. Like I've got. Not just digitally, but like in my house, my garage is full of crap. I've got a like a secondary, smaller garage that is just packed to the gills with crap that I absolutely don't need. And 
part what of me kind of, just what said, kind of crap do you have like is like the most what is the most appealing to keep crap like whatever like whatever it is whatever it could be however unlikely it would be for you to keep it what type of crap can you just not get rid of at all uh see well nothing really on purpose but it's, that's that's kind of the thing because we're a military family so we've moved a thousand times so clothes that don't fit uh, I've got I've got like toys that my kids played with when they were three. That my, my youngest is twelve now. There's no you know like baby toys. <laughs> why, why, why do why do, are you just hoping they have a kid one day and bring them over and the toys are still oh, relevant? Like what's I'm going on? Lazy. I'm too because I want to have a, a yard sale or you know a garage sale or something like that. But I'm too freaking lazy to make that happen. <laughs> that it just like ah oh, I'll get to it I'll get to it. Meanwhile I need somewhere to put this junk. Oh. And it's just, it just adds up and adds up. So you know, you know, uh, you know the trick, or the trick that I use, is uh, is you kind of store everything in like chronological order <laughs> by when you last use it, so that like in your closet you just hang your shit up, and whenever you always hang it up on the same t in the same spot, and I have a little a little separation hanger in between, like in the new year I just plop the hanger down, and then anything by like late December the next year. That's still on that side of the rack is just like goodwill gone. Like, and you do that with everything. Wow, yeah, I, I definitely need to. Do I, that. I do that with my shirts actually. It's it's funny you say well shirts and pants. Uh, I, I have long sleeves on one side and <laughs> short sleeves on the other. And then if you look at the bottom, <clears throat> the bottom hanger, it's shorts on one side. This, so my shorts are on the same size as my long sleeve shirts and my pants are on the same side as my short sleeve shirts but anyway so, I, so when you said shorts i thought i was picturing short pants like <laughs> shorts like you were hanging your shorts on hangers yeah <laughs> i hang everything on hangers man i'm lazy i ain't folding shit okay <laughs> <laughs> gotcha but but i always put everything when i pull it put it back on the shelf or back on the hanger i put it in the middle of, of the two so the new the stuff i've worn most recently is in the middle and it just kind of migrates out so after a while, I look at the shit on the very fringes, and I'm just like, not wearing that again. <laughs> Don't fit that. That's gone. You got the para like the what's that the, the like parab parabolic curve yeah. version that I have. <laughs> you got to do math to figure out what you know. How. <laughs> what can I say? You know, um, hey man. Uh, so I, I I took the kids Christmas shopping last night for mom and auntie and all that stuff. Uh, oh my god, fun, fun times. It's always so, fun, right? So horrible. It was just one trip to Target. Like we just we got everything at Target in one in one go, but it was like pulling fingernails trying to figure out what they wanted to get anybody. And it's just like, so I I basically came up with all the ideas. I I bought everybody everything, and um, hopefully hopefully everybody likes it. If not, uh, they're gonna catch the blame. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> Like I don't know if she's gonna like this or not. Um, kid number two, this is from you. Do you, do you, do you know what a, do you know what a happy light is? Um, uh, no. Uh, okay, so so uh, so up here in Alaska, of course, we just hit the winter solstice yesterday, right? The shortest day of the year for the people in the northern hemisphere. A happy light is a light that reproduces the color spectrum of the sun at a very high intensity in a very small area. So you place it near you for 10 to 20 minutes in the morning as you're getting ready for work or whatever. And it helps your body produce that natural vitamin D, which is supposed to incre improve your mood and everything else since we have so little sunlight up here. That is not what I was thinking it was. No, no. no. <laughs> However, but, but, the result is the same, right? But, you but, do but feel, I'll, you I'll, feel I'll, happier. I'll, I'll tie it back into that, though, because I got this for my wife. And if my wife is happy, you see how it ties back around? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see vitamin, that. vitamin D, am I right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You got to get that got to get that vitamin D in. Uh, <laughs> that was an important one. Although I do I will say I do have those uh those special like the the like sunlight mimicking lights cuz I sleep in a cave basically. Like there are no windows or or lights at all uh in my in my sleeping area and so I got these lights that turn on. And you like at first that they were at first they worked really well, but they're missing like the most important part, which is the sheer heat. 
Like when you like when you're in, when you wake up and the sun is shining on you, you you're waking up less because of the light spectrum and more because you just feel that heat yep. on you. Mm-hmm. Um, still, inter- it'd be interesting to see because I do live in California, so maybe I'm not as deprived. <laughs> Something else I've noticed up here, we, we're having the shortest days of the year. Uh, yesterday we had a little more than four hours of actual sunrise light, you know, direct sunlight. Uh, several hours of, of indirect sunlight, you know, where it's, it's bright, but it's not sun, you know. Something I thought about is we spend all this time with nightlights on because everybody's either afraid of the dark or they don't want to stumble on anything or whatever else. They can't sleep without a nightlight and this and that. Come the summertime... We're going to have those blackout windows, you know, blackout curtains up, and it's going to blackout all the light except for one tiny little sliver, and that tiny little sliver is going to keep everyone from sleeping. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> Dude, living in Alaska would drive me insane because of just the, yeah, exactly what you were talking about. My, my, the saving grace for me is I have no problem sleeping when it's light outside because I, yeah, I'm, used to working, yeah. I'm work, used to working night, night shift, so... You know, sleeping during the day is no problem. So because it gets to be summertime, it's just light all the time. I'm like, out. And everybody else is like, it's light outside. We got to play. Like, <laughs> no, this dude's got to go to sleep. That, they'll, they'll get over that. Eventually. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Kent. Sir. Yes. New Year's Eve streamathon, man. How many hours this week? I just want to touch on this real quick. How many hours this week have you spent trying to make sure everything on that was going smooth? Oh my God! Since since this time last week, I've probably spent I've probably spent about twenty four hours. No kidding. Yeah. Just planning, communicating, um, stuff like that. In fact, John, I think I I spoke to you, or emailed you, or coordinated something with you about a time <laughs> slot or something like that. Uh, so, so this are is how you, you down? Communication is. Uh, I am. I I believe I have confirmed it. Whenever it is. <laughs> <laughs> See previous yeah, so comments about John, staycation. I'm for the 4:30 p.m. Eastern time, 4:30 p.m. slot. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me check my. Oh yeah, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So if you want to give our viewers a, a preview of what uh what what is it you're you're going to be using your time. Oh my gosh! So I'm really competitive. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm like, we are going to raise the best hour. We are going to we are we are going to have the best hour. We're going to raise the most money, <laughs> like all the other streamers. I've, to tell you the truth, I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do yet, but it is going to be the best. <laughs> Probably something contender related, you know, considering. <laughs> yeah, right. As as people can see, actually, I don't know where you are in relation to me, but uh, yeah. A, so a, the contender game for, a, for people that here. Don't the the game of political debate, presidential debate, presidential Get debate. Get the tagline right, man. Or the guest is on the show. Much more auspicious, presidential. Yeah, it, it's not like Justin reminds us of the tagline. Several times a week, um, but uh, no, I was I was gonna like straight up bring it up, but uh, then I'm like, oh, I wonder just how much, like how much crossover does uh, does your audience have with Justin? And I'm like, ah, everyone probably already knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, you know what? We'll we'll get into contender here in a little bit. I've I've got some uh, some questions and uh, and so we'll, we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. Oh, time. absolutely, happy to talk about it constantly hey, and all the time. Hey, you know, Amos, did did you happen to did you happen to do that thing that we do every week where we watch something and talk about it? Um, you uh, mean you mean these? Yeah, so TED Talks. I I know that John watched a TED Talk and I know that I watched a TED Talk and I'm certain that that you Amos watched a TED Talk. I watched about half I watched a- a- I watched about half a TED Talk. <laughs> now, this is, it's like we're going old school, man. We're going retro because this is what we used to do, where one of us would, would watch one, then the other one would have some lame ass excuse for not watching one. And then we would just like, we would take turns every, every week. The next I, week, I would be the one with the lame ass excuse. I take offense to my lame ass excuse for not watching one. I was, 
Okay, so so it's a really lame ass excuse because I had the entire week and I didn't watch one. I tried to watch one today, but I was trying to throw a video card and do, I did a bunch of re- research on which video card to try to kill the Skype lag bullshit that we've been experiencing. And right. uh, so far, it's working out pretty good. Um, I kind of I maybe went overboard, you know, adding two components instead of just one, but it seems we're working pretty good. So um, that's my lame ass excuse for this week. Meanwhile, um, let's go with the. Uh, uh, Gene editing can now change an entire species by Jennifer Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to tell us uh, about this, John? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll pick up the baton from that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so first of all, like this is this is the first podcast I've done in a really long time, and so I was like, you know, trying to be prepared for it. Uh, before before I get into this section, I want to say that I did uh, like watch an episode of the show <laughs> to sort of pr- prepare myself for it. And of course, and some good friends with Brett the M Trick of Roundsville, and he was on last week. <laughs> I watched that one. So just to get the elephant out of the room, Kent, I don't mind that you don't like my laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like that's fine with me. Well, you know, and the, the the funny thing about this is, like, it's not. That I absolutely don't like your laugh. No, no, it's fine. I get it. No, 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 no. Let me explain. No, no, it's it's really it's really great. It's really oh, John a fine your thing. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. That's good times. Anyway, back to the task at hand. Uh, I really uh so in in the spirit of prepping for the show, uh, I did watch a tech talk, uh, or rather a couple of them. This is the one that that sort of struck me as the most interesting one. Uh, the gene editing. So so y'all remember that um, like I'm sure in biology class where you learn about the pea plants and like I forget what it's called, but like how genes are passed on. Like the dude who studied the pea plants. Uh, so they have this gene editing machine called the CRISPR. Where they can actually like edit a gene, which is great, but like you only edit one gene at once, uh, you're not going to do much damage with that. Uh, but they just figured out a way to make it so that you can edit a gene, and then you can also edit the way that it's transmitted. So instead of there being a one in four chance of a regressive gene being passed on, it actually becomes a four in four chance, like you're guaranteed to pass that gene on, uh, which means that you could do something like uh, make a mosquito that is uh, like male, like it must be male, it must pass on the the male gene. And then within like 10 generations or something, mosquitoes can't like no longer exist because they can't breed. Uh, So I just thought that that was just like, what the heck like totally new uh genetic like a a genetic tool that we have for improving and uh fucking up everything let's just start with mosquitoes can we do that because i'm 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 down with getting rid of some mosquitoes yeah i'm down with that too (laughs) i'm I'm sure those things serve i'm sure really food for something but damn it like can we actually they're not like like they, they don't make up a big enough part. I actually, that's another thing that I read a while ago was mosquitoes literally are not part of the food chain. Like every per- everything that they are is served by something else. They are just a problem. <laughs> and they're a problem everywhere too. Like they're a huge problem up here in the summertime. They're a problem. Yeah. They're definitely a problem in South Carolina and Hawaii and California and Indiana, like Texas, like all the places I've ever lived, they've been a huge problem. Kent, have you ever um, lived anywhere where they weren't a huge problem? Uh, they're not a huge problem here in New Mexico. Um, they they are here, but they they're not that bad. I think the worst place that I ever experienced mosquitoes was Okinawa. Oh my god! Yeah, the, the area that I lived was right next to like thick ass jungle, and the the base hospital actually recommended that we get uh, what is it uh, cephalitis immunizations yeah japanese encephalitis yeah because the the mosquitoes were just so th- i mean there were clouds of mosquitoes and the, yeah. the problem with your the house in okinawa was not only were you living next to this like practically a jungle area it was always wet yeah always, always. like every, it would rain and, and re-moisten the area and then the, it'd be dry everywhere else but except for those woods 
and then the mosquitoes would just keep breeding and keep breeding. It was just goddamn disgusting. Yeah, it, there was no off season. It didn't matter if it was December, or January. There were still thick clouds of mosquitoes. There. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, the big, the big, the big like the big bopper for that is actually in like uh, like South America, where like malaria and yellow fever and dengue fever are like. That's how they're transmitted, and so this is this is what this was the point that they were talking about was like they they managed to figure out this gene that makes like they've had it for a while where they can make mosquitoes uh, like like mal the malaria virus can't exist inside of the mosquito, but until this t this technology came out, uh, the only way to make that the prevalent gene in the population would be to release a hundred times the number of mosquitoes currently in the area. So <laughs> just like in these mosquito swarmed areas, just like, well, here's a hundred more. Like maybe so, in five years you won't have malaria. <laughs> so, so deep, <laughs> deep in the pain in order to get rid of the problem. That's, <laughs> that's great or good stuff right there. <laughs> but now they don't have to. Now you release like 20 and then 13 generations, like they're all gone. 13 generations. <laughs> Oh man, how about um, how about James Veach, the agony of trying to unsubscribe? Yeah, so I, I figured I'd go with a lighthearted one. Uh, I, I watched a bunch of of TED talks over the last couple of days, and uh, I, I landed on this one just because it it's really lighthearted, and this guy is funny. In fact, I he did another TED talk a couple of years ago that uh, I actually talked about. Probably I realized this after I watched this one that. Oh yeah, I I did his other one. Uh, so, it, he, the name of this talk is "The Agony of Trying to Unsubscribe," and he, he's talking about how when you get a spam email and you you scroll down to the bottom and you click the unsubscribe button, mm -hmm. but then like a couple days later you get another email from the same the same spammer, <laughs> and so he he just goes on the this whole rant because about, the, the, the unsubscribe becomes the confirm your address button. Yeah, basically, yeah. So, you remember, this is the guy that he was going back and forth in email with mm. with spammers before. Mm -hmm. Well, in in this case, he he kind of did the same thing where he instead of unsubscribing because it was unsuccessful, he just went ahead and replied to the guy and st tried to strike up a conversation and like took took it like to this whole other level. And it's it's really pretty funny. It's like it's only like six or seven minutes long, I think, and it pretty good um so yeah guys check it out james veach it's uh v-e-i-t-c-h in the spelling of his last name just check him out he's really smart and funny and he's just he's, uh, he's fun to listen to so check him out excellent now speaking of subscribing to things john what is this you have in here about subscribing to four newspapers are you just that into the news is that like is, is that something you're just diving into are you are you a news geek uh, I would say that I am much more of a news geek now, because um, I because I know that you guys do the like geeky things of the week, and I was I was thinking about this, and I was like, well, like the other day I was playing Pokemon Go in one hand and like an emulated version of Pokemon Red in the other, like for when nothing was happening in Pokemon Go. But it's like there's not really much of a story there. Uh, I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> Am I right? I'm right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but this whole uh, this other bit was um, you know, after 2016 election, all of this like fake news gambit. I'm like, you know, I don't read any news uh, almost at all, and I, I I started feeling like that was a problem. <laughs> so uh, so I ended up to solve this. I ended up subscribing to four different newspapers. Um, probably five now because I keep trying to open up the uh, the Washington Post articles that, that are popping up and it's like hits me with the paywall like you've read too many Washington Post articles <laughs> on uh, on Facebook and um, it's been really interesting like uh, like it's certainly difficult to keep up with <laughs> but uh, but you you do end up getting a much wider picture. Uh, of what people are talking about, like what what some of the same things, like the different the different uh, outlets, like mention. Like sometimes my phone blows up and it's the exact same headline, mm -hmm. usually some variation of like Trump tweeted that he's a sarcophagus. <laughs> uh, 
but uh but occasionally like you'll like the new york times will pick something up or or wall street journal will pick something up that that's interesting um or like pro publica oh my gosh like that is that is probably my favorite one um and it's uh it's like a total nonprofit uh news source um that, that does some of my favorite like the, my favorite articles uh that i've read have come from there so i don't know you guys so you guys read uh read news at all i i actually I, do it Go i was just gonna say I've, I've kind of been a, a news geek for most of my life i was the kid that used to read the newspaper like when i was 10 years old now of course i started out with with the comics and the sports page but then i i started reading the headlines and get, getting more interested in you know politics and world news and all this kind of crap so yeah i'm i'm the one that's in google news every day just scrolling through and i and like you said i like i like to read the diverse uh out you know sources diverse sources so like i'll check out what cnn is saying versus what fox news is saying versus what like npr for example is saying and just see the different takes on the same situation or what one outlet will choose to report versus what the other one will Mm. and it's it's uh i think it does a diversifying yourself like that gives you a, a much much broader picture than if you were just say you know the new york times or the washington post and that's all you read you know my experience with the news i really like political drama like I really like the political drama. I'm just not very good at remembering names because it just, I, I guess I just don't care that well. Um, yeah. So I tend to keep th- to what's interesting to me, i.e. what I can, what names I can remember. And that's um, nine to five Mac and uh, uh, BGR back in the day. And like b- pretty much everything that's uh, ev- everything that reports on tech. I'm, I'm there and gadget, man, I love gadget. I read in gadget every day. <laughs> so I stick with that. It's it's more factual. There's less drama in it, and every once in a while you get a really really juicy story that's reported two different ways from two different sites, and it's fun. And then it just goes away because it just gets washed under by more news. That's how I like it. Oh gosh, just that's the big problem. And like news is just always happening. Yeah, yeah, and that's I think that's what keeps me coming back to it because it's if you wait ten minutes, it, you know the world's different than it was ten minutes ago. But when it comes to tech news, like I get really bored of tech news really fast just because it's like oh hey the new gadget that we came out with is a little bit faster than the last one that we came out with it's like yeah I, I do think we're in a, in a little bit of a plateau uh on on like really really interesting news stuff uh and once once like self-driving cars and stuff are, are actually happening then it's gonna be like Oh, because these people are now upset that their jobs are gone. And these people are now <laughs> upset that their jobs are gone. Yeah, that's. I don't see. I feel completely differently, Ken. It's not about what what's faster. It's about the deals between the companies and who's chasing who and and all that. Uh, that's that's. Yeah, that's, none that's of my, none of that uh, interests me. That's at my all. foray. Like, I, I know I'm still gonna get a new iPhone next year. I know that you know when once this computer craps out, I'm gonna be able to get another computer. Like it's not to me. It's I love gadgets. I love them. But what deals are being made behind closed doors does not interest me even slightly. And, and this is why DTNS is the first podcast I listen to and the last one you have queued up. Yeah, that's, 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 that's why I only listen to uh, I listen to DTNS probably like two episodes a month or something yeah. like that. I, um, I love listening to them talk about the stuff, but I'm honestly not not that interested in the content. Uh, John, you mentioned Brett from last week, and uh, mm-hmm. so on that podcast, I mentioned that I, I'm not taking as many pictures as I want, and I got to tell you, I've been taking pictures like crazy this week between these really weird sunsets with the sun never rising out of this, like it barely crumbs over the mountains and then comes back down, and this ice fog, and now it's starting to happen at the same time, so you get these sunsets where the the sun looks like an atomic explosion off in the background because it's so blurred out from the ice fog. It's, it's gorgeous. And uh, I've been taking pictures all over the place. But we've had all this great aurora activity lately. You know, the northern, the northern lights, they're up there like just twinkling away, little rivers of light in the sky. It's all pretty. And every time that happens, all, the, only, the only camera I have is my phone, and the phone doesn't pick it up at all. So I'm going to have to start carrying my camera around, and that's going to piss me off. Because every time I came, I carry it around, it ends up breaking or I, I break a lens or something stupid. And that's, uh, 
That's that, that's that's one of my problems. Um, do either of you? This is my question. Do either of you have problems carrying tech around with you, or is your phone enough? Ooh, I would say that my phone is uh, is is more than enough in, in almost all situations. Um, I do I do I do have the uh, the new iPhone, which uh, which the camera on it is like way better than the old iPhone was. Definitely, I mean, still not as good as a, a camera that you would carry around. But uh, but sometimes, like yeah, between my phone and sometimes an external battery charger for my phone, uh, I'm all set. Yeah, no, I'm 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 with John on this one. I, um, you know, back in the day, like probably 10, 15 years ago, I used to carry around, a, you know, a little bag. Like if I would go somewhere for the day or whatever, I'd have a bag full of just different gear. But now, all of the things that I would carry, my phone does all of. Hmm. it's the camera not only is it a communication device but it's also a camera it's my gps uh it's it's everything all in one uh, i actually want to change my vote sometimes i uh <laughs> like I, there's one thing there's one thing that i really really can't stand on the phone and that's reading i hate reading like extended content uh, on the phone which is why i now have like a, a pile of of newspapers two feet high that I still have some of them, most of them I still haven't gotten to yet, uh, building up in my apartment. So the big thing that I will always try to make a, make a point to like put in a bag or somewhere is, uh, is my Kindle, like the Amazon, the Amazon Kindle, which is just so much better, uh, for any type of, uh, any type of reading than, than my phone is. Mm -hmm. But generally, yeah, minimalist, like my wallet is one of those like super thin wallets, uh, that does it doesn't open. It's just like a, a sleeve, uh, so that you don't have like three cro cards banging around in your pocket. Uh, and uh, and and my phone, and then I'm all set. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that sounds like me. Um, yeah, I wish I wish that was the case. But for me, ideally, I would have my laptop bag, which would have my MacBook Pro in, or my uh, yeah my MacBook Pro, my iPad Pro. I got my phone in my pocket. I got my GoPro in my bag with the spare battery for each of those. Um, my Apple Pencil, of course, because that just goes right along with the with the uh, iPad Pro, and um, I might even have like some other just randomness about. Plus, my camera hanging off the other shoulder, like I I can't. You, you, I wonder you, if you could I'm... rig up. I wonder if you could rig up like one of those. You know those guys like the street performers who have all the instruments, with, like the big bass drum, and then they like kick their leg and like the horn sounds. I wonder if you could rig up some sort of some sort of that type of thing where you're just walking around and everything's just like a, a finger twitch away. It's like, oh, you see something you want to take a picture of and you like wing your elbow out. <laughs> i tell you what, this, is, this podcast tonight is just full of ideas. We're coming up with all kinds of great products. Yeah. Kickstarter season. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I, uh, I just, I, I, like when I'm at South by, I'm walking around wishing I had my i my like another device with me to record while I'm using this device to. to it's just it's it's just ridiculous. Like I I I'm never satiated with, with uh with, gizmos and gadgets. It's all the time. <laughs> if I could, I need a hat that has like you know I don't I don't need Hololens or anything like that. No Google Glass. I need actual screens, like just above <laughs> my line of sight, so I can just look up and see it. You know, like check Twitter oh. here, be playing Mario Run here, you know? Like, that's what I need. I just need that shit, like, there, and then I need something down here. I need a Vader helmet with all the screens around it so I, I can still see in the middle. Like, that's what I need. That's that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. like, so, so an Oculus Rift, but with two eye holes. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just a zero latency screen that it actually look out, you know? <laughs> Or just a full Oculus Rift, but with like a camera on the front, so when you want to actually see what's going on, there we you go. just feed the cam the webcam into the Oculus. Meanwhile, I'm on the uh, I'm on the bus, and they just just screen everybody. Just, why, why is he wearing goggles? <laughs> just doing all the things. If I, if I could if I could get my eyes to separate and look at two different things at the same time, I mean. <laughs> I could double the production. Just go full on gecko. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The problem is I'm not actually doing anything with my time when I'm on all these devices. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm checking Twitter and playing Mario Run. <laughs> I can waste my time twice as fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, um, twice as much time to waste is uh, that's the dream. It's the American oh, dream. Man. 
Um, so oh. I have to ask, are you guys playing Mario Run? Because, I mean, it's, that's, that's all that's on my phone right now. It might as well be the only icon on the home screen. Uh, no, I'm... I downloaded it. I played it a little bit. You played the three, the free levels, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> way am I paying 10 bucks. <laughs> not happening. Um, I nope. did, and it's pretty fun, but I'm still not sure if the family sharing is working on it because we had to rebuy it, quote unquote, for my son. And I'm not, it, it didn't say like, oh, this was free, but it didn't say, oh, thanks for purchasing either. But he's got all the levels. So I don't know <laughs> if that could go either way. I'm waiting for him to, waiting for that bill to come in to see what happened before we get it for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Oh, that is so fun, though. Um, speaking of fun, you, John, helped create the contender. Uh, that is correct. Okay, end of story. So, yep. That's it. <laughs> Moving on from that. Established. <laughs> the news breaks here first, folks. <laughs> this has been a very interesting, uh, an interesting story for you, between uh, between the original idea, going through the production, the Kickstarter, the aftermath of the Kickstarter, finally getting profitable. I mean, this has been. I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of it in your uh, in your Medium post, which I'll, I'll show up here and we'll throw in the uh, throw in the in the show notes and stuff. Um, Oh yeah, no doubt. I was actually um, like, as part of my my staycation, like I can't not work. So today was like the right the right the like recap of the last medium article. Um, it's the it was the third one. It was supposed to be the last one mm. uh, of the like three parts of the contender. The first one was everything we did before the Kickstarter. So how we came up with the idea, how we iterated uh, on the idea, how we like brought in. Uh, Megan Fawn of Guts and Glory, who uh, who did the design, um, how it went from being like a fairly thinky, a fairly thinky like strategy game to the sort of run and gun like rhetorical slugfest that it is right now. Um, then the second bit was how we actually ran the Kickstarter because, I mean, people people really like to hear those stories, like increasingly becoming more of a niche. Uh, economy where where you can go and you can use Patreon or use Kickstarter or use Indiegogo to like make whatever you want. But a lot of people, myself included, the first time you come into these, you're just like, oh, I guess I'll just you know here's my idea, thanks. And then you're like, <laughs> get really butt hurt that you don't raise any money. Uh, so a lot of people have written like, hey, here's the the simple things you need to know about writing our about how how you run a Kickstarter. Uh, and we wrote one of those uh, as well, because I mean the main reason for that, like that, that's a fairly um, saturated field, like how we made a lot of money on Kickstarter. But what I've noticed about every single one of those articles is that they all neglect to mention like the preconditions. They all talked about, and then we like did this stretch goal and this stretch goal it's, it's, and all, then, it's all the successes but none of the trials right right so so or rather it's it's all the it's all the like we did all of this during the kickstarter but they forget to mention like oh and by the way like our partner was the oatmeal <laughs> and that's uh <laughs> and that's why exploding kittens raised eight million dollars and so you see people on uh on forums like oh exploding kittens like they did they like did this special fancy like thing it's like yeah but they also you know, had a mailing list with 100,000 people on it and five, 500,000 Twitter followers. And so we wanted to just be like upfront, like this is why we were able to fund so fast. Like, like Justin was on stage four times at a convention the day we launched. He has a very, like very passionate, very active, very uh, awesome community that he's built over the course of years. And if you don't have that, then you're not going to get that kind of initial success, no matter how great your your thing is. So um, that was that was the second one, which uh, you know like seven hundred people read, <laughs> which brings us to the third one, which was how we, you know, we we raised one hundred forty thousand dollars on Kickstarter, and then the third article was how we took that one hundred forty thousand dollars and turned it into forty thousand dollars in debt, and then. <laughs> how we slowly inched our way back to breaking even. <laughs> and that one, oh my gosh, that one took off. That's probably like bigger, bigger exposure than I've ever had 
in my life. I ended up having 100,000 uh, views on Medium. It was the, the top of ha Hacker News. Uh, was the it's, it's number like 12. It was either 12 or 24 um, article of the year on the R Board Games mm -hmm. um, subreddit. Um, and it got featured in Medium as well. So apparently, like, that was a story... Like that's that's the story you don't hear a lot. It's like, great, we did a really great thing. Here's how we fucked it up. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, is a very compelling story. So if you're wondering how to get uh, get free marketing for your business, then just badly manage your money for a year and then write about it. <laughs> <laughs> when you realized you were forty thousand dollars in the hole, how like what was the? Did you have this this feeling of just oh, we're fucked. Uh, like, it was, was a slow onset. I, I will say it was a slow onset because because we we decided we didn't end up forty thousand dollars in debt. We we made the conscious decision we are going to invest additional money into this product mm -hmm. to keep. I mean, that's another thing that that people people don't. Know. It's like not always obvious up front. Is like the more uh, physical things that you make, the cheaper they are. So our decision was like, we just sold 3,000 of these bitches in a month, 30 days. Holy shit. We better order like 20,000 of them just so that we'll have enough <laughs> uh, for the year. Um, and uh, and it didn't work like that. It, it, uh, if you look at the, it was my, one of my very favorite and also least favorite graph in the article is showing the exponential momentum while on Kickstarter and then the day Kickstarter ends, it just like it just goes flat. It's like Kickstarters are things that people are excited about and small businesses are not. So we still have of the initial 20,000 uh, that we ordered um, then the 3,000, uh, about 3,500 from the Kickstarter uh, rewards. Uh, we probably still have like 13,000 games in stock mm. um, over the course of the year, which, uh, if you've ever been to Costco, is about 23 pallets of games. <laughs> oh so it's an entire Costco shelf <laughs> uh, full of contender games. Oh, uh, well, now, so that's awesome. You have inventory. Yeah, we're pro we're profitable now. Fun funny enough, like that article was the thing. Like it went viral on Cyber Monday, uh, so that's that's oh, great. That's great timing. That was perfect. oh my god. Um, totally didn't plan that. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely just a solid bit of luck. Um, solid bit of luck there. And and that article, like the day that the article was went viral, was the day we actually started actually making money. Um, so before that, Justin and I. Um, we were, we had, we had whittled it down to only being, we'd whittled it down to only being, uh, like $8,000, uh, in debt over the course of the year. So we went from $40,000 to $8,000 and Justin and I were like, you know what? Like, I'm sick of these, I'm sick of these emails from our manufacturer. Like, Hey, uh, I'm going to pay up anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, so I put in, I put in, uh, like 3,500, Justin put in 3,500 and we just wanted to wash it clean. Uh, and then the medium article hit and we were like, Ooh, it's gonna <laughs> slide that back out of there. Hey, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one thing that you guys have done a lot of is expansion packs. How, how, how much of a pain in the ass is it to produce those versus, uh, like worthwhile, like as far as, I guess what I'm trying to ask is work versus profit on those. Like, is it is it worth it to like in in 2017? Are we going to see a lot more expansions because it's worth it? Or oh my gosh, like, yes, those those are like are those uh, as we see it, those are the new uh, bread and butter of the contender. Like, I would not mind if, if of the third thirteen hundred. Or the thirteen thousand units that we have left, if we set ten thousand of them on fire, <laughs> and just <laughs> uh, just like sold the these little mini expansions because those are what people want at this point. Like it's it's work uh, getting the news out about the base game, but then people play it and then they really like it. And uh, and these expansions, they're they're topical. They're like they're tied very closely to things that are happening. So in like five years or or 
and, and maybe that's too soon. But in 10 years, you can look back and go, oh, 2016, holy shit. Am I right? <laughs> like, look, at, look at all, look at this just travesty of 2016. Um, and you'll just have, you'll have these like little installments of, uh, of, of like things, things that are relevant to the time that are also just fun to say in, in the context of the game. So we're totally, uh, in fact, um, I believe yesterday we sent out in our email where we're announcing the pre-buy. So you can pre-subscribe to the, uh, the 2017 uh, expansion packs. And, and I think four, I think five, five times this year, uh, you'll get a new, uh, new pack in the mail. The first one is, uh, topically enough, the Hamilton uh, expansion pack. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, and, and for those that may not have the game or haven't bought multiple copies, such as myself, um, cruise on over to thecontender.us and you will come up eventually. You click on the little store button and you end up with a little scene like this right here. The current game right now is uh, $17.76 rather patriotically. Um, I believe it's that way for like the end of the year. Is that what I... Uh, we've we've talked about making it till Christmas, but I I don't mind leaving that up till the end of the year. That's something that that we're gonna have to. So so at least a few more days if you're watching this live. At least a few more days. Actually, no. Ends tonight. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Yeah, Go. Yeah, I got. Yeah. I am I am hovering over this button right now. <laughs> if, if if you happen to be listening to this uh, after the fact, yeah, you might want to get that real quick. Uh, I mean, who knows, right? Could be uh, whenever. I mean, Justin might fart, hit the button accidentally, and it's over, right? I mean, it's just, oh yeah, it, absolutely. Oh, uh, also, uh, the Diamond Club is out there. If you use the Diamond Club, uh, you get a ten cent discount, but also Justin will sign your shit. Yeah. <laughs> now, could, is is there a code that we could use to get John Teasdale to sign? Oh snap! I guess. Uh, yeah, let's get to the important it's stuff. Not right now. What should it be? <laughs> let's crowdsource this. All right. Uh, so, so chat room, why don't you let us know? Uh, chat room located at diamondclub.tv. Chat room, let <laughs> us know what uh, what code John should set up so that he can sign your orders on uh, the contender.us. Hot hot beverages suggest that we use M is cool. Insulted guest. <laughs> ah, call back. <laughs> How about just... <laughs> Jim is better at Pokemon Go. <laughs> Which, uh... Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that hot beverages. I've been. Uh, I don't know if you've been listening the whole time, but uh, I've been. I've been he's, catching he's, some Pokemon over here. He's he's been he's been a playing the Pokemon. Oh, every it's, like, it's almost every other day at this point. I'm texting her like, "Oh, Emily, yeah, <laughs> you have a you have a Pichu? Oh no, <laughs> I have a oh, I got a Togepi. Oh no, are are, are, you, uh, are you going to South by? Um, Cause, maybe because you might not want to. She might beat you up. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh what well, we're already we're already running a gag on justin um she's she's kidnapped me so i'm actually in uh in hot beverages basement right now so i'm totally kidnapped um because uh we're being held for ransom for justin's births so i keep that going well, right. there you go there that you go. means you're lucky oh man um so i've got one more thing one more thing in here uh I found a Twitter account. I don't. I'm not even sure how I found it. Did we ever? Wait. Did we ever decide what discount code for him? Uh, probably to be uh, to be announced. I bet. I bet John will put it on his Twitter account. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I certainly will. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be John is cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like Emma's better at Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> Make him work for it. it well, like, yeah, because that shit, because because hot beverages is buy almost every single thing. But if I made that a discount code, then like we got at least another one from her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, victim of your own success, Emily. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I found a Twitter account called Old Picks Archive, and I started browsing around, and it links back to a website. And I, <laughs> I'm gonna. She'll throw this on screen. Now, Kent, I know you browsed this for a little bit. Um, oldpitsarchive.com, and 
wow. If you're into photography at all, or if you're just into history or Hollywood, any of those, any combination, anywhere in the Venn diagram of those three things, you are going to love this site. Yeah, man. So I saw this this link that you'd put up, and when I was supposed to be working, I clicked on it, and uh, I checked it out, man. And it is the coolest collection of vintage photographs. Uh, vintage meaning like in anywhere from 100 years ago to like the early 80s, I think is the most recent photo that I saw. Yeah. And they've, they've organized into to cool little collections. Uh, I don't know. It, if, if you like uh, just knowing about the past or you just you're a photography buff or you just want to see something different, um, check it out. man. It, it's so cool. I, I was clicking around in there and I you ever heard of of fake years it's like a, a indian um uh, india like india the country not not native american mm-hmm. um indian mm-hmm. uh, religious people that uh they're basically they're basically bums at least that's what that's what a lot how a lot of people see them they're they're homeless um uh, beggars basically but they do this for uh like it's their form of worship like God is all I need is kind of what it is. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking, like, talking to people about God, and they supposedly have, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if I want to say powers, but like a, a connection with God that's supposedly uh, know, tangible or something like that. And I don't know. Anyway, there's a whole collection on these guys, and it was super fascinating. Check them out. John, did you, have you been to this website? Uh, yeah, I was poking around on it uh, before the show. Um, the thing that the thing that I really like about stuff like this is it kind of shows just like how, like we always think of we always think of the past as like you know quaint, and like oh weren't people you know so different back then? Uh, but I, the thing I like most about these photos is it just really illustrates just how little we change as a society. Like like we have a, we have different. We put different skins and we call things different things um, and like just different different terms for things. But but generally, it's all the same. We all do the same stuff. Um, yeah, this, this, much the, the clothing styles and the hairstyles and pretty much everything else is the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my, my girlfriend's in this show called uh, The Speakeasy uh, in San Francisco, um, which is it's like an immersive theater thing. Um, set in the 1920s in like a speakeasy, so it's so you are, as an audience member are a patron of this 1920s speakeasy, and you can like go from different rooms, and they have a casino room and like the cabaret room, and like the actors are all just wandering around doing this very tightly orchestrated scene, uh, and I get I get a lot of the same vibe um, from this website as I do from there, just like all of the same stuff like. You go to the bar, you get drunk, you complain about your job, you try and pick up chicks. Uh, <laughs> you, like it's it's very uh, it's very cool to, it's, to poke through. It's still the same. Yeah, I, I really like you know I, I like history. I like um, Hollywood and the stories behind the scenes and things like that. And I love photography, so it, it's like a, a ultimate little uh, triumvirate for me. Hey, uh, hey, hey, John, uh, there are some people that have not heard of you. I mean, you being so late to the Internet and all, you weren't there to uh, to really kick in and and be well known and stuff. And in fact, let me let me look real quick. Um, I, I believe uh, I believe there's a problem with your Twitter account. Uh, I mean, <laughs> let me look this up real quick. I believe there is a problem with your Twitter account and. I believe it is that there are uh, only 263 people following you. And if you look down through your Twitter account, I laugh on a regular basis with these damn tweets that you've got. So anybody that's watching, if you're not already following John, you should. Cruise on over to twitter.com slash John Teasdale, J-O-H-N-T-E-A-S-D-A-L-E underscore. That's right. That's how late. (laughs) That's how late I was to the internet. Kent's Couldn't get a, my full name. Kent's got a uh, got, got a similar story on that one. So, what's your Twitter <laughs> handle, Kent? <sighs> At rm underscore del noche. Oh, he couldn't even get the underscore. He had to add, add the ritual misery rm in there. So yeah. And I wasn't cool enough to put the underscore at the end, though. That that's fairly. <laughs> oh man, it confuses the heck out of people. Pretty- <laughs> Especially when it's underlined. <laughs> I I know I know that. 
all all of my followers, all 264 of them now, are uh, they they worked at it. They they really worked <laughs> worked to get there. I appreciate I appreciate every one of them. Look, look, look at that. Our our uh, out of our three fans, one of them just jumped on and uh, hit the old follow button on there. So very cool, very cool. John, where else, where else can other people find you? Um. You know, the uh, the easiest way to get in touch with me at this point is to email the contender game at gmail dot com <laughs> because uh, like I'd say eight out of eight out of ten times I'm the one responding to those. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I'd like to I'd like to up my up my podcasting game. And when I do that, I'll be back on on Diamond Club, I'm sure. Um, but in the meantime, Twitter is where it's at. Good Plus. Day. This New Year's Eve, oh man, that's where you can find me. <laughs> that's where everybody a, needs to find I'm you. I'm right? uh, like you. Might, we're gonna we're gonna burn this shit down. <laughs> <laughs> For um, anybody who has not heard, on New Year's Eve we are having the streamathon. The New Year's Eve streamathon is 27 straight hours of Diamond Club streamers. Uh, we're starting on. Eastern time, we are starting at what is it? Uh, so zero four thirty. So four thirty a.m. on Saturday, December thirty first, all the way until seven thirty a.m. the following day on the first. So Sunday, and, Sunday morning. So and, it's twenty seven straight hours. Kent, me and you are starting that and finishing it. Well, we are starting it, and you might be there to finish it with me. <laughs> <laughs> one of us hopefully will finish it. uh man no it's gonna be a blast it, it's gonna it's gonna be so much fun for the streamers themselves but man for the people that are that are watching this they are in for a treat because we've got people uh not only ritual misery and john teasdale uh we've got bonnie brushwood we've got m from the from chat room hot beverages we've got the gin we've got uh, Roberto Villegas, we got Crunchy, Stacy, Scotty Emo, Coverville. Um, who else we got here? Fitz, Christy Cates, Poodle Puncher, uh, the Have a Drink podcast, who's never done a video version of their podcast. There's some really cool Diamond Club streamers that I met when I was in uh, Cincinnati. Um, they are going to be doing their their first ever video stream for this thing. I'm looking Way, way forward to that. Jackie Hearn's going to be doing some puppet stuff. We got Geek IO, Captain Fubar, Snowshoe. Um, yeah, man, it's going to be so awesome. Uh, I can't wait. We're going to raise a lot of money for extralife.org. We're raising money for children's hospitals. Uh, we could, Amos, do you have we a do you have a link for that? Because if people if people want to start donating now, they it's already open. You can go to extra-life.org. Oh. Slash, yeah, there is. <laughs> he put in the uh, the the long one there. Um, there, let me. I'll put it in the show notes. It's, it's there. We go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Extra dash life dot org slash team slash uh uh DC TV, and that should take you there. Is it DC TV? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm about I'm about to check it, but I just dropped it in the uh, chat room, so that makes it official. If it's not that, then I'm gonna have to find a way to make it that. <laughs> um, if you want more information about the stream a thon itself, you can go to yolo420.com slash marathon 2017. Very, very soon, as in probably tomorrow or Saturday, the the full schedule will be available for people to look at and see who's streaming and when. Um, more things are gonna be added to that as time goes. We're gonna it's it's gonna look like a TV guide, I think. I uh, um, I just want to stress that as of right now we are one eighth of our goal. We haven't even started the, the uh, marathon yet, the streamathon, and we are at one eighth of our goal of a thousand dollars. We have raised one hundred and twenty five dollars thus far. And yep. uh, just at this pace, mind, man, we are going to shatter that. Just keep in mind that there is a poster out there, a Scott Johnson original poster signed by Scott Coverville, which is Brian Ibbett, uh mm -hmm. Ace Detect Tom Merritt, Jury Justin Robert Young. Uh, uh, Shwood, which is Brian Brushwood, and and this one, this one really gets me. This might be a first. Invisible wife, <laughs> Bonnie Brushwood, will sign the poster and mail it out to our top donor. So yeah, well, there yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff happening. Uh, check it out. 
Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's that's where we're at with that. So very cool, John. Uh, I, I had ch- chatted with you a little bit about playing some Contender live, and uh, if if you are interested in that, if you're interested in playing the Contender with co-creator John Teasdale, hit him up on Twitter at John Absolutely. Teasdale underscore. Hit him up. It's say I want to play. Time. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna crown the president of Contenderville. Dying. Club. <laughs> oh snap! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it first here. President of Diamond Club will be elected during the NYE Streamathon. Awesome! Awesome! <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, so, right. hey, I got, a, I got a question for you, John. Uh, you got it. Do, do you send letters to Santa Claus? Do you, do you still do that? I do not still send letters to Santa. If I did, if I did send letters to Santa uh, Claus, they'd be like, "Hey man, like you're doing great. Like I don't really need anything. Like I'm all set." I was the I, I did the Reddit the Reddit secret Santa, and uh, I was the worst. <laughs> like like my Santa had to email me like four times for more information because I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. Like I don't really need anything. I got like I got pretty much everything." Well, Good luck. It, I like Harry Potter. It's funny well, you say that, cause uh, cause I happen to have your last letter to Santa right here. So, yeah, this must have been last year or two. It yeah, it's been pretty recent. It's been pretty it recent. Been um, but this is your last letter to Santa right here. I'm about ready to read it. Um, and I got to tell you, I mean, I, I I pre-read it, and it's it's interesting to hear the points of view you had uh, last Christmas or so. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm on the edge of my seat. So. so <laughs> So I'm, I'm here. We go. I'm I'm, uh, I'm not going to try to read it in John's voice though, because I would just uh, I don't think it worked <laughs> out very well. But uh, I'm going to go. Uh, so, dear Santa, how are you? I am cathartic. Do you remember me? I am the little digital purger who sat on your vitamin D at the department store. I was wearing prevalent pants and a thinky shirt. You probably can remember me best by my stupid laugh, my rhetorical eyes, and my face that is completely covered with mosquitoes. Santa, for Christmas, I would like an electric newspaper, a real Pokemon gun, a transistor sarcophagus, and a new baby cell phone. Santa, <laughs> if you would bring me all these things, I promise to be a good little secret performer, a street performer, and to always eat my saturated travesty, and to always clean my Twitter account. Merry Christmas and a happy new contender. <laughs> See? I don't know why you're trying to lie saying you don't write these letters because I have one right here. You can't deny that's your letter. Honestly, man, it's just a little embarrassing. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you outed me on your show like that. That's just rude. It's... <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we're, this show is all about the uh, the news flash. I mean, this is all brand new stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. Brand new stuff like president of Diamond Club being elected during my section on the NYE Streamathon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's uh, awesome. let, let the debates begin. Hey, Kent, where can people find more of your shenanigans, man? So, other than on my Twitter account at rm underscore del noche, if you are a craft beer lover like I am, and you're curious what I think about certain beers, go to ratebeer.com and look up username del noche, and you read my 500 plus beer reviews. Where are you? I, where are you at? I, I find it funny that you bring up beer because I happen to find this. Ooh. Uh, and, the uh, the Thrones series this is from a, a Game uh, of Thrones. the Omegong, Oma Omegong, Oma right? Uh, Valor de Hoyers, uh Belgian style triple ale. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, from Omegong and uh, Cooperstown, New York. I happen to have two bottles of this. I wonder what I would do with two bottles of this. Oh, maybe you should send you should send one my way, well, or I, I can't mail it, so I might have to just bring it with me to South by. So. Let's do that. You know what? That sounds like a plan. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you can find me at Ethan Kane on the Twitter. That's E T H A N C A I N E. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. You can email us Ritual Misery Podcast at gmail.com or Ritual Misery at Ritual Misery at no what was it? Podcast at Ritual Misery.com. One day I'm gonna nail this shit. <laughs> Uh, our next guest if we can get it lined up our next guest is going to be Richard Gunther he's really busy we're really busy but we're going to do a, a year uh, year ending wrap up of all the, the good and so much bad from this year and uh, we're going to make that happen hopefully we can get together with him if not then it'll just be me and Kenton and whoever the hell shows up uh, this is our new time Thursdays 
on diamondclub.tv. You can watch us live. Join the chat room Thursdays at 7 Pacific. Right, Kent? 7 Pacific. That's okay. right. Thursdays, 7 Pacific on diamondclub.tv. Cruise on by. You can join us in chat room and make and be part of the conversation. Um, we, I, I'm putting a hard deadline of the end of the year. It's December 31st. As soon as the stream starts, we will be done with the current swag. If you want one of the hashtag still in beta t-shirts or anything else that we have on the site, you have to get it before the stream starts because as soon as the stream starts, I'm killing all the stuff that's on there right now. It's all limited edition. You knew that going in. So go to ritualmisery.com slash swag. Buy your swag now. Get it what you can. Free drink. If we see you wearing a Ritual Misery shirt with the hashtag still in beta on it, free drink If we when we see you down in South By. That's a permanent token. Don't let Justin Robert Young think he came up with that idea. That idea. Uh, that, that's, that's <laughs> we've ours. been doing this for two years yeah, going we, we've now. Been, we've been doing it for over a year now. Um, <laughs> and uh, we will be at South By. I'm Amos. I already told you where, my, where to find me. This is this great show. I'm trying to read my show notes and t- talk at the same time. This is how <laughs> we do this shit. This is how it's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Hey, um, I should probably hit this button right here and say, Kevin McLeod, we appreciate you allowing us to use your music. <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks, guys, so much. Love you. <laughs> Oh, John, so pretty. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> Here, I want to, I want to, I've just tweeted you guys a thing. Um, I'm going to post it in the chat because it's what my screen looks has been looking like for the past 30 minutes. <laughs>